Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 567. The name of our devotional today is God's grace in our imperfection. But first let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Where would we be, my Father? If your Holy Spirit wasn't in this world, my Father, my Lord God, thank you that you have left, left us a deposit, my Father, when you said that you would go away, but that you would leave a deposit, that you would leave a comforter, that we would never be forsaken or alone, my Father, because you're leaving your Spirit with us here upon this earth. My Lord God, thank you so much for that spirit that guides us and leads us and speaks to us. That spirit that teaches us, my Father. And it has a way of communicating with our spirit that is absolutely supernatural. And I just wanna thank you, my Father, for the work of the Holy Spirit upon the earth. Help us, Holy Spirit of God, to steer clear of anything that is offensive to our Lord. Help us to become the people that Christ thought of when he was dying on the cross. Help us to be transformed by you and to become the best version of us, the people, the men and the women that you know that we can become. Thank you so much for your patience, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for your love. In your name we pray today and every day. Amen. God's grace in our imperfection. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made in perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. In a world that often demands perfection and flawless performance, it is easy to feel overwhelmed by our shortcomings and our mistakes. However, God's message to us is clear. We don't have to be perfect. His grace is more than enough to cover our imperfections and His power is more evident in our weaknesses. God's grace is sufficient. Paul's words reminds us that God's grace is all we need. It's not about our ability to be perfect, but it's about His grace that fills the gaps in our lives. This grace is unmerited favor, a gift from God that we cannot earn, but it is freely given, power in weakness. Our weaknesses and imperfections are not hindrances to God's work in our lives. In fact, they are the very places where His power is displayed most beautifully. When we are weak, He is strong, and His strength shines through our frailty. Paul's perspective is transformative. Instead of hiding or being ashamed of our weaknesses, he boasts in them. And we should boast in them as well. And that way, the Lord is greater. The Lord is exalted because we can overcome a weakness by his power. And this countercultural approach highlights a deep trust in God's ability to use our brokenness for his glory. No matter how messy our lives may seem, God's grace is sufficient. It covers every mistake, every failure, and every weakness. We can rest in the assurance that His grace is always enough. Are we extending God's grace to others? Are we extending the grace that we receive from God to others? When a person is vulnerable and they confess something, or they are honest about something about their lives, do we use that against them? Some people do that, and that is a total lack of integrity. 
when a person is vulnerable, when they are honest, when they are sincere about something in their lives, we need to hold on to that as a treasure, that they trust us, that they think of us so highly that they would confide in us something so personal or some a secret of some kind and never, ever, ever use it against them, not even to win an argument on the contrary. And that person can say anything about themselves, but we can never repeat it back to them. That would be a lack of integrity. Something so simple, you might say, Something that for some people, it doesn't make sense. You would say, well, they said it about themselves. Why can't I say it too? No, it's not allowed. Integrity does not allow you to repeat what the other person has said about themselves. On the contrary, we are supposed to cover those vulnerabilities. We are supposed to cover those things that those secrets or those truths or those sincere statements that others confide in us. It is a very, it is a very delicate thing that I am speaking about because imagine that you were to confide something, something so personal or it is a secret to someone else. And if someone else were to repeat it and much less throw it in your face or use it to win an argument, that would be devastating to the other person and the trust would be completely broken. So we have to extend the grace. We have to extend the mercies. We have to extend the, the gentleness that Christ extends to us. And as we confess our sins to God, God doesn't use it against us. On the contrary, he uses it to grow us as a father. And when we receive those acts and those proofs of trust from other people, we need to use it to encourage and to lift them up in that weakness to give them confidence, to pray about it for them, to pray for them. And that is what we are called to do, to lift each other up. Freedom, we need to have freedom from perfection. No one is perfect, we are not perfect, other people are not perfect. We need to be free from the pressure of being perfect. That God doesn't require perfection from us, he desires our hearts and our trust Embrace the freedom that comes from knowing that God loves you just as you are. Boasting in Christ like Paul did. In our weakness we boast, knowing that they highlight Christ's power in our lives. Our struggles and imperfections become testimonies of his grace and of his strength. Accept that it's okay to be imperfect. God's grace is sufficient for you and for me. When we make mistakes or fall short, turn to him and trust in his forgiveness and his strength. In moments of weakness, rely on God's strength. Pray for his power to be, to be made perfect in your weakness and watch how he works through your life. Take time to reflect on the ways of, that God's grace has covered your life and speak about it. Give testimony of God's grace in your life. Give testimony of how you were a certain kind of way and got how God transformed you. Give testimony of how you overcame an obstacle. That is how we exalt the name of the Lord. That is how we are in our minimalistic way. We might think that we are not doing anything for Christ, but as we are giving testimony of God's grace, in our weakness or in our imperfections or over our sins, we are giving testimony of a God that is absolutely amazingly faithful and powerful and loving and transformative. And we are serving God just by doing that. 
speaking of Christ, encouraging others, lifting others up, giving confidence to others, reassuring them. What we do for the least of these, we do for him. So therefore, we are exalting him by doing that. We can compliment another woman. We can say, oh, you look so pretty today, or I like the way that your hair looks, or that's such a nice pretty dress. We can do that. Being totally confident in our femininity and in our humanity, we can be confident in doing that. Everyone needs to be recognized and valued. Everyone needs to be affirmed. We need it and others need it as well. As we lift up a sister, as we lift each other up, we are lifting ourselves as well. We thank you, O oh God, for this message. We praise you. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be perfect. Thank you that we are human and in our weakness, your power is great, my Father. It is perfect. We embrace the freedom that comes from relying on your grace. And we let our life be a testament of your incredible love and provision. My Lord God, we boast in our weakness so they may highlight the beauty and the power of Christ in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your abundant grace that covers all imperfections, all of our messes, my Father, the chaos in our life, my Father. My Lord God, all of that you cover with your grace. Help us to embrace our weaknesses, knowing that your power is made perfect in them. Teach us, my Father. Teach us to become better every single day. Teach us to Convert those weaknesses, my Father, into strengths that you could use for your kingdom, my Father. And as you are transforming us, Lord, Lord God, transform our heart as well so that we can always give you the glory and never take the glory for ourselves, my Father. My Lord God, thank you. We want to rely on your strength and we want to trust in your provisions always, my Father. May our lives be a testimony, my God, and a beacon of hope to others. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, we give you our love, our allegiance, my God. We give you our testimonies. We give you our lives, my God. We thank you and we bless you. Amen. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine and dance in the rain. Remember that God loves you so very much. You have a million reasons to be thankful. Until we meet again, God bless you. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus.
Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.